has skipped 12th grade. She is, um, yes, she, um, yes. She's gonna be going to Chestnut Hill in the fall college. Isn't that good? So she, I'm telling you, we have, and she has a four, 4.0, 4.0, Great average. Give it up, give it up. Chloe Youngblood. All right, that's her mother. She's out of control, beeping that horn. All right. Sylvia, we see you. So she's going to give her a speech, and she's going to name what it is. And she has her own YouTube channel, but we're going to tape it so people can uh, play it. So she's going to read you a little something. All right. Uh -huh. Yes, but you can go over six, uh, safe distance, so you can go over there. Okay. All right, there you go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's going to come down some. So they can see you a little bit. Watch your step. Watch your gown. Good afternoon to all who are here today. <laughs> I am honored to have this opportunity to speak before you, giving honor to God who has made it all possible, and to those who have allowed this opportunity for me to speak, I thank you. If I had to put a title on this, it would be, I am an overcomer. Wow. I am an overcomer because I have had many challenges in life that would have crippled me or hinder me from being my best. But I was able to overcome and make it to the side of victory. I had, <laughs> if I had to explain why I was able to be an overcomer, it would be because of three factors. The three factors are my anchor, my attitude, and my aspirations. Due to these three factors, I stand before you as an overcomer and have the assurance that I always will be an overcomer. <laughs> Although I am 16 years old, I have been through many of the challenges that young people today face or have gone through to make life more challenging than ever. It is the challenge of being rejected. However, we're in good company when we have dealt with rejection. I can name so many famous actors and actresses who have experienced the bitter taste of rejection, but have risen higher and now are admired for their works or accomplishments. However, the company that I'm talking about is Jesus Christ. Jesus was rejected by his own family and those who were close to him in culture. They rejected his identity and his being because of his royalty and being God's son. I too had peers reject me because of my uniqueness and my character. I was involved in a dance ministry in my church where I was ridiculed and called ugly names because I was different. I was rejected from the popular cool crowd because of my identity as a kingdom believer in Christ. I had been rejected by family and made to feel unwanted because of my lifestyle or thoughts as a believer. At first, this desire to fit in or be accepted made me seek after approval or acceptance from peers or others. When I, when I began to really develop a relationship with God, I realized that my identity in Him and how I was made in His image made me special. I did not need any approval or acceptance from anyone. Why? Because Jesus died for me, and he welcomes me in his kingdom as his family, and accepts me <laughs> for who I am, and loves me just as I am. Once I accepted Jesus and opened my mind to my identity in him, I began to be confident in who I was created to be in Jesus. This identity in Christ allowed me to accept myself and build my confidence. Therefore, my first factor is to have an anchor. The anchor is Jesus. Amen. When you have Jesus as your anchor in life, you can be steadfast and assured in who you are in him. When people reject you or don't accept you, you don't have to feel bad because Jesus, your anchor, accepts you Amen. and will keep you in this life. It is important to make Jesus first and a keeper of your soul. Because when life gets overwhelming, God will keep you from falling. First John chapter 5, verses 4 through 5 says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this, 
And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This scripture reminds us that Jesus is our anchor and he gives us victory. The second factor that makes me an overcomer is having an attitude of an overcomer. The definition of attitude is settled way of thinking or feeling about something which is reflected in a person's behavior. My attitude was a critical part of my poor academic, my poor academic performance in school during my elementary days. I was testing poorly in reading and math, which indicated that I needed support. Next, in the seventh grade, I continued to perform poorly in math. I continued to perform poorly in math, and by eighth grade, I was encouraged to not take it, take algebra one, but to take intermediate math C. Okay. <laughs> However, in the summer of 2017, I had decided I was going to be the best I could be in math. I had decided to change my attitude. I had decided to start thinking new thoughts that would change my performance in math. I had decided that I was going to excel and be the best by working hard and thinking better thoughts. The factor of changing my attitude changed my entire academic path. I started ninth grade with Algebra 1 and I set goals for my school year goals that I never achieved. The first goal was to be an A student in algebra and get straight A's in every subject. By the end of ninth grade, I have earned an A in algebra one and had straight A's. My attitude, my attitude had changed everything. When 10th grade came, I was continuing with straight A's. Anne had decided I wanted to be in the National Honor Society. Anne wanted to graduate a year early. However, in order to graduate a year early, I had to take Algebra 2 and I had to take Geometry in the same school year. In addition, I had to earn the ability to take a couple of honors courses in History and Literature. This was a tall mountain to climb, but with determination and an attitude of I can make it, I was able to earn straight A's in my 10th grade year. The scripture that empowered me to change my thoughts was Philippians 4.13. Oh, yeah. I, I can do all things, things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Adopting this scripture and having an attitude of determination, I was able to earn the highest grade in Algebra 2 with a 98. Right. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> I had my anchor, Jesus, and I had an attitude of being victorious. And it made me an overcomer. I had overcome every obstacle that held me down in my academics because of the factor of changing my attitude. The third factor that has been a big part of my overcoming spirit is having aspirations. To have aspirations to have hope or ambition of achieving something. Having the satisfaction of being an overcomer is to have the hope and the belief that you can win. You can make it over every obstacle or challenge as a winner with a belief, hope, and ambition to be your best. When I was feeling motivated to be a better me, I made goals to achieve and was able to achieve them with an attitude of wanting to be my best. When young people want to make it, they must expire. What are your goals? What do you want to be in life? What is your purpose in life? What are your expectations for yourself in this school year or the next school year? What are your dreams? You must answer these questions for yourself. Find out who you are and how to aspire to be the best in life 